In preparing for our assembly this morning, I, I'm thinking along the lines of uh, fellowship together in the truth and the kingdom and the function that it has. Our fellowship in our assembly is not just a formality. It's not just something that must be done, and it's not something that can be done uh, disengaged. That's, that's, that, that's antithetical to the, the, to the nature of fellowship. The, the nature of fellowship is that we're, we're both giving and receiving, and that's one of the peculiarities, unique aspects of the kingdom, is that every member in the body gives and receives. Even the, the old, seasoned, uh, gives and receives. And you, you might think that the, the seasoned wouldn't have anything they, they could receive from the younger, but they do. Mm-hmm. And you, would, you might think, in the, according to the rules of the world, so to speak, that the younger wouldn't have anything that they could give because they're young, because they're new, because they don't have the experience. But they can. They can give. In fact, I've, all of us have experienced this of being provoked by something said by someone very, very young. And even though you might think they, they just said more than they realized what they just said, but the fact is they said it, right? Yeah. And you can be provoked. That's, that's fellowship. That's, that's how, how it works. So fellowship with the brethren has function in the kingdom. It has, it has utility. Right. It's not just that it's, it's Sunday morning again, and so this is what we're supposed to do. This is why uh, we have such anticipation in meeting together in our assembly is because fellowship is, uh, is functional. We add to one another. Mm-hmm. We provoke one another. Yeah. We're benefited by one another. Uh, all, so many of the young children in their prayers say, a- they ask in their prayer that we will have more when, after the assembly than when we came. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that, that prayer. Jesus talked about, the goodman of the house having in his bag things old and things new. Everyone in the kingdom ha- has a bag of things that the Lord has given you. Of course, that, that's like a, a, uh, an allusion to our heart or our, our spirit, you know, where, where the Lord is depositing himself and the truth and light and, the, and his spirit, his love. And so our fellowship is we're bringing things out of our bag, but then we're also putting things into our bag that that each member brings. And so Paul, when he talked to, when he wrote to the Corinthians about the assembly, he said, you all come together. One hath a psalm, one has a word, one has giving of thanks. One, there's all these different things that the different members bring. And that's where he said, let all things be done decently and in order because it's, it's important that everyone have a chance to give. Yeah. That's one part of fellowship and that everyone have a chance to receive. Yeah. That's the other part of fellowship. So uh, just uh, by matter of, by way of definition, Fellowship has to do with uh, participation. That's, one, that's part of the definition. Participation uh, or an associate of um, there has to be some real live uh, uh, connection, affiliation to have fellowship. You don't have fellowship with someone uh, that's unfamiliar and foreign and far off and unaccessible. They have to be an associate, a partner. Um, to communicate. That's another part of the definition of fellowship is to communicate. We can't all sit in the room and not say anything and just look at each other and call it fellowship. Right. It's, it's to communicate. The, remember Paul uh, in his short letter to Philemon talked about the communication of your faith Amen. being effectual. That's a part of fellowship. Another word used in the definition, this is Strong's definition, is distribution. And I like that. You know, our fellowship is like a distribution of, um, of the, the good things that the Lord has given us. Galatians 2 uh, is where uh, Paul, uh, speaking uh, about himself being the, not, not one of the original, he, he was uh, one of the original apostles, that he was one born out of due time. He said that James, Cephas, and John gave us the right hands of fellowship. Mm-hmm. What Paul was saying was, though... Um, Paul wasn't one of the original 12. The original 12 confirmed him as an apostle by giving him the right hands of fellowship. James, Cephas, and John, they didn't, they didn't have any confrontation with Paul. They gave him the right hand of fellowship, meaning they, they dis- di- distributed to him. They were partners with him. They were associates with him, and they, get, they gave and received mm-hmm. with Paul. So that, that fellowship was a confirmation that God had called Paul uh, and made, made him uh, an apostle. 
to the Philippians, Paul said that he, he thanked God for their fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. They, they were partakers of the same gospel that Paul wa was a partaker of, and he thanked God for their, for their fellowship uh, with them. So three things, just uh, to uh, sum these things up before uh, our class time this morning. Fellowship is, can be broke down into these, these three categories, and I'm sure there's, there's more than this, but just for the sake of time. Fellowship is provoking, fellowship is confirming, and thirdly, fellowship can be correcting. So in our fellowship, we are provoked by one another. How many times, just think back, and it's good, this is a short little bypath here. It's, it's good, that, like the, the next morning, Monday morning, go back in your mind through the Lord's day and, and remember and recall and pull up everything you can from the assembly. You'll, you'll be provoked by it. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll have gained ground by hearing the things that the brethren, by the, that the brethren gave. Pro, provoked. I've, I, um, I can make more progress... Um, in fellowship than I would by myself. Amen. In fact, there's, a, there's such a wisdom in this, how the Lord is, he puts the solitary in families. He, it, it's not just a, um, just kind of every man figure it out for themselves. There is an aspect where every, you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right. except the, the caveat is that we're, we're all working out our own salvation with fear and trembling, and so we even have fellowship in that. So there's a personal a aspect of salvation, but then much bigger aspect is a corporate uh, aspect of salvation. So pro provoking, I, I don't really know where I would be without being provoked by all the brethren. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. It's, it's such, such a value. Now, and uh, different than that, but, but related to that is the aspect of confirming. And this, this word is found three times in the book of Acts that the apostles traveled and they confirmed the souls of the disciples. And I love what that says. They confirmed like a uh, our children, as they're, they're learning, our, our encouragement of them, and we confirm them that they, th this is good, that is right. You're, you're, uh, you've learned something that you have. You see the value of that is it adds, it ministers confidence. And think about this in, in the assembly, in the fellowship of the brethren. You, you have this thought about the scripture, and you connect this scripture with a few other scriptures, and you're not, you're not seeing it. You're kind of like the man that Jesus had to touch twice, the, the blind man. You're seeing, you're now, you just had the one touch, and you're seeing men as trees walking. You can see something you hadn't seen before, but you're not for sure really how it all fits together. And so you say something about it in the assembly, and someone expands on what you said, and that confirms. Mm -hmm. That confirms you. This is how the Lord works in the body. And finally, correcting. Mm -hmm. This is something that's not as, um, it's not as pleasant necessarily, but it's necessary. Amen. And every one of us, it uh, doesn't matter who you are, have, has been on the receiving side of correction. Mm -hmm. And like the scripture says, that um, chastisement is not, um, is not pleasant for the time, but it's necessary and it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And so in the assembly, you know, I've been corrected by brethren that didn't know they corrected me. Yeah. Something can be said, and it's, just, it's like, how did they know? Well, they didn't know. They didn't know what I had been thinking or what I had been seeing. Mm -hmm. but, but this is how the Spirit works among brethren. That's fellowship. Yeah. And so you can actually give something, add something to someone that, that you didn't even know about. And that's, that's one reason to give thanks. Yeah. Because you learn that your, your fruit, your ministry is actually bigger than what you knew. Bigger than what you could tell. And the giving of thanks in the brethren, it con confirms you in that way. So the, all, the provoking, confirming, and correcting, they're all interrelated, but they all have uh, unique aspects as well and needful aspects. So there's a, there's a lot happening in the assembly. I, I, uh, I'm glad that, that I don't feel like, oh, it's Sunday again, I have to go to church. I have to take time out and go to church. Well, that, that's a pretty inaccurate statement, really, because we don't go to church anyways. We, the church does the going, as someone has, has well said. So let's, let's pray as we open up the day and uh, ask the Lord to bless our, our class time. Father in heaven, we're grateful uh, for this uh, fellowship that you have put together. Uh, we, we realize, Lord, that we, it is not a man that wills or a man that runs. And unless God, unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that built it. And so we're, we're grateful that we are laborers together with you, and this is your field and your building. We pray that you would bless this day, enable us to, uh, to give and to receive uh, from one another and to one another.
Help us to be sensitive uh, to your spirit and to, um, to lay aside any, any weight uh, that would beset us or hinder us. We pray your blessing on the class time now in Jesus' name, amen.